Hey everybody, my name is Chad Allen and welcome to Firechild Videos, Back to the Basics. Uh, what this uh, training series is designed for is to get those of you who are new to Blender up to speed and over that learning curve so you can start thinking a little more creatively and you won't have to fight with the software as much. So uh, hopefully this will give you a good base to start with and uh, we can kind of demystify this because there really is a lot to Blender. Um, I'm not going to go over everything about... Oops. All right. Ignore that. <laughs> I'm not going to go over everything Blender has to offer because that would make this a 250 or 300 part, you know, tutorial covering days and hours and months and years. And uh, okay, I'm just spouting off random units of time. Let's get into the basics. Uh, first thing, let's go over here and just look at our layout. Uh, first time you fire up Blender, you have no idea where to start. Here's where. You've got your object tools here, which your object tools are used to affect your object. And uh, some of these you use more than others, but uh, it's a very handy tool to have. And one thing you're going to learn about Blender is that they set up the hotkeys very well in, in this release of Blender, the newer beta releases of Blender, and into the future, I'm assuming. Um, to bring up and collapse your tool panel, it's T on the keyboard. So it's really easy to remember T for tool, and it opens and closes your tool panel. So helpful to have. The uh, next window we need to look at, this is our 3D viewport. And in our 3D viewport, this is where we're going to be spending most of our time. Uh, this is where we're going to edit our mesh, our lamps, our camera. You know, this is where, this is the meat and potatoes part. This is, um, this is Blender 3D, really. Um, now, navigating around this view is real simple. It usually uses a matter of mouse clicks and a couple shortcut uh, hotkeys. Um, First of all, you want to be able to rotate around your, your mesh because we're in 3D now, so we're doing all sides. So to rotate around, it's real simple. You just click and hold your center mouse button and drag. And that's all there is. You can rotate to any, any side. Now, there are different uh, configurations. Let's go ahead and go File and User Preferences. Let's move this in. There are different, if we go to Input, you have an orbit style. Now, right now, I set mine to turntable. Some people prefer the trackball. Uh, I prefer turntable. It's just a different way of rotating around. And let's go ahead and see. You know, choose one and then start rotating around with the center mouse button and then choose the other and do the same thing and find which one, you know, works for you. I seem to, you know, trackball is good, but I seem to fight with it a lot. So I usually just keep mine at turntable because it's just a little easier for me. So ah, that's better. To each their own though, so uh, give those two a try. That's a good homework assignment. And uh, you know, while you're there, go into your user preferences. Just take a peek. You may not understand what all of this stuff is, but uh, go through and just take a peek at everything because that's how you're going to learn. You're going to learn less by watching and listening to my annoying rambly voice, and more by just poking around the software. Just you know, find a, an option and go. I wonder what the heck this does and mess with it and figure out what it does and, and then move on. Because that's really the best way to learn is just learn by interaction. So interact with the software. Don't wait for somebody to tell you to do it. Just do it. Um, I guess Nike kind of stole that one. I hope they don't sue me. But just do it. <laughs> Next we got uh, 3D viewport. So we're rotating around. If What if we want to pan left or right? We just want to move over. That's easy to do by holding down shift, the center mouse button, and then moving your mouse. So real simple. So shift, center mouse button, move around. Center mouse button by itself rotates. And if we scroll the mouse wheel, look what happens. We can zoom in and zoom out. So those are really important tools to memorize. Those are really important that you, you understand those. So center mouse wheel to rotate. Shift center mouse to pan around. And scroll the center mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Now, that takes me to the number pad. Now, the number pad on your keyboard is used to navigate your viewports. Because right now I'm in user perspective, which you can see right here, and I can basically, you know, freely free roam. Basically, um, let's say I want to just look just at the top view. Well, seven on your number pad will take you to your top view. One will take you to your front view. Three to your side view, and you know those are the most important ones to remember: top, front, side. You can also say you're in front view and you want to see the back of the mesh. Hold down Control and hit one. That takes you to the back. So just remember that one is front, control one is back, three is I think right, I believe. Pretty sure, yeah, three is right, control three is left, 
7 is top, control 7 is bottom. So control and pressing the number just selects the inverse of, of whatever that normal view is. So really handy to remember there. And no matter what view you go into, say I'm in front view, and I still want to rotate around, center mouse button, drag, and I can rotate right back into user perspective. So it's important that you learn those and, and learn them and memorize them to where it's second nature. Like, okay, top view, bam. Oh, I want to go to side view, bam. You know, it's important to remember those. And then you can also toggle in and out of orthographic view uh, by hitting five. Now we'll get a little more into that later, but that just changes your view. The specifics of it I'll, I'll get into in a later tutorial, but I just wanted to note that now so you can start getting familiar with what all of these do. So experiment with your number pad. Zero, by the way, goes into your camera view. Now what your camera view is, that's what you're going to render. So at whenever you hit the render button and you start to create the image, whatever you see inside this box, this inner box here, that is what's going to render. Nothing outside of it is going to render. So if you want to see, you know, you're working with your mesh and you're like, well, what does it look like in the camera view? Hit zero. And there you go. Uh, next panel we can look at, speaking of render, we've got our render panel here. And we've got a whole bunch of panels in this air general area right here. And they're all for something different. Everything's very well organized. So um, select our mesh. Oh, actually, before we get to that, let me explain that other thing. Uh, everything that we have in our scene, we can see in our 3D viewport. And to select different objects, you're going to right click on them. So right click to select the mesh, right click to select the camera, and right click to select your lamp. And you'll notice whatever we have selected is highlighted. So that makes it really easy to see what you've got selected. If you want to select multiple objects, hold down Shift and then right click to select multiple objects. And then you can select everything. If you want to just select everything in your scene, just hit A. The easy way to remember that is A is for all. You want to select all or deselect all. A is on and off. OK, so that takes care of that. Um, what else? I guess we'll get into these, these panels well, I guess we're doing a quick overview. So, and you know, you've got your render panel here. This is where you set all your render settings. You can click your image or animation to render each things out. You know, your output, where you want to send it, PNG, say so you want to make a quick time. All of your render settings, all of your image creation settings, resolution, aspect ratio, all of that is done from your render tab, which obviously looks like a camera. And you know, then we've got our world tab, which is where we affect the background things of that nature, ambient occlusion, which we'll get in later, environment lighting, those are all uh, things for a later topic. Mesh settings, you can adjust your location of your lamp. Right now, if it'll, it'll change depending on what you have selected. So I select my camera, and then it's camera stuff. So that's what that one does. Constraints we'll get into later. Modifiers we'll get into later. Uh, you know, materials and texturing, you're going to be spending a lot of time in Blender working on materials and textures because you can't have a realistic render unless you have realistic materials and textures. It's just the way it goes. So um, that's that. Down here at the bottom is, we, is where our timeline is. So when you start doing anima uh, animations, you're going to start doing keyframing, and all that keyframing stuff is done right here. So see, I can click and drag, and right here it tells us we're at frame 118. You can also see it right here. So that's just important to note. When we get into the basics of animation, we'll go back to that a little bit. But uh, really, that's, that's the basic overview. Um, you know, Watch this tutorial a couple times. Remember some of the things I said. Learn these shortcuts of how to rotate, um, how to translate your camera, your view, I should say, and uh, how to zoom in and out. And in the next tutorial, we'll get around to modifying and moving your mesh, your camera. We'll get in a little more uh, hotkeys in, in the next video but for now your homework assignment is to open up blender start playing around with things just start randomly you know checking out things you didn't know and leave me a comment in the bottom and let me know what you discovered uh, if don't worry if it seems like it's basic new stuff because we all start somewhere and that's what this tutorial is for so i hope you enjoyed this part one we'll see you again tomorrow for part two where we'll go a little more into how to move things around and a little more into some fun stuff. So see you guys next time. As always, check out the website for amazing stuff. And don't forget to submit your art to the online gallery. So um, enjoyed it. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Take it easy.